as well. And then again, we're going into the, the EQ adjust section now of the auto setup. And then effectively what you've got here um, is very in-depth tone controls on these sliders. Anyone who's um, ever owned like an older graphic equaliser or who might make their own music at home uh, electronically will be very familiar with the, with the type of slider that was on there. And then again, you can apply that across each channel. And then you've got your professional, so you've got your reverb measurement, depending on which macaque setting you're using, if you want to do that automatically, and then you can view the reverb measurement that it's taken. Obviously, we've not taken one because we've not got the microphone set up with the, with the unit here at the moment. Um, generally, what we tend to recommend um, is that you I mean, obviously, the, the auto setup on this is quite in-depth, but if you do it all manually, a microphone is never going to give you the same level of attenuation to what you want as your own ear is going to. So we'd always recommend that you do it manually, um, and something as simple as just setting the channel levels and the speaker distances to, to your ear can make a huge dis difference to the performance of your amplifier and ultimately your speaker setup. So, and then we can just click on there, and there's a little demonstration here of just what what the uh, macaque or uh, multi-channel acoustic room calibration can actually do. Um, let me just take you through. While I'm just, while I'm just showing you this, uh, I should mention a couple of other things about this amplifier. Firstly, it uh, has the uh, PQLS across all channels. Now, PQLS is the Precision Quartz Locking System. So if you're using this unit with a compatible Pioneer Blu-ray disc player, so like the BDP LX52, for example, um, it provides jitter-reduced, almost jitter-free audio playback over HDMI um, using this system. It's similar to the uh, Denlink Fourth Edition that you may have seen in our video review for the DVD One UD. Um, it obviously it will only work with a compatible Pioneer. Blu-ray disc player. Um, if we move out of the auto setup menu now, so you can just go in into here and you can check the data. So what you're doing here is you're not actually setting any of the settings yourself, but if you want to just go and have a quick look, maybe someone's just had a bit of a play around with your settings and you're not sure what they've changed, but it's not sounding quite right, you can just flick into here and go, right, well this, what isn't looking how I set it, so then you can find out where it's changed and just pop back in. and uh, obviously change it back and then there's an application for the PC as well so you can output all of your data to the PC so you've got a hard copy of it elsewhere on the amp and then you've got your different names for your six different memory settings for the acoustic calibration um, and obviously it depends if you, you know if you want to name them differently to memory one memory two etc you can do and also you can copy them across here as well so if you want to just replicate what you've set on memory one across six times, then you can say, okay, well, I want that copy into memory two, and then I want it copied to memory three. You can see it's, it doesn't take too long to copy them across. But then if you do that by mistake, you can also just pop back out there and clear it. So actually, yeah, I, I don't want to use the auto setup that I've done, and I'll go in and do it manually. So if it sets it up and you're not happy with it, you can just go in and clear them both, and you can see again, that doesn't take too long to do. Um, if we then pop out of the, the auto setup and the data management section, we take you into the uh, main rest of the settings for the receiver. So you've got your manual speaker set up here. Now this is similar to what you're doing in, in, in the auto setup menu, but you don't have to use obviously the microphone for this. Um, again, you've got your different speakers set up there um, with your front bio up in, your second zone out, but depending on what you want to use, those extra seven. 6th uh, and 7th amplifiers on the unit 4 and you can set the size of your speakers here so small or large obviously depending on whether you're using a full range you can set the f if you don't have a sensor speaker at the moment perhaps you're looking at upgrading um, and you want to run the amp in like a phantom mode if you take the sensor out of it it will, it will send the signal to your front left and right speakers so you, you're running it in eff effectively 
<laughs> excuse me, um, effectively yeah, like a phantom mode. So you'll be running the centre information for your left and your right. And then you can set the, the channel levels here. So again, you can set it to do it automatically or manually. Manually is what we, what we recommend. The major difference between doing this and the auto setup and doing it here is you're not setting a reference channel. So you don't have to say, right, okay, well, I want the left channel to sound like this, and then everything in relation to that, you can go, well, I want the left channel to sound here, and then I want to set the center speaker up differently. And again, you've got the distance as well. Um, same level of increments. And then uh, the X curve, so if your treble's too loud, you can just attenuate that down a bit too much. So if you just your speakers are sounding a little bit bright maybe, that they haven't sounded before, you can just drop that down. And then the THX audio settings so you can take the loudness the loudness plus off. If your subwoofer conforms to TXX Ultra 2 standards you can pop that on or off as well. And then moving out of the manual speaker setup you've got the input setup. Um, so here's just you know you're like your assigning menu. Um, so you can rename We've got video one here, but you can rename that if you wanted to uh, something else. So if you wanted to rename that, rename that to Sky or um, PS3 or Xbox or DVD or one of the more familiar inputs that you're likely to have, you know, one of the sources you're likely to have on there. Um, or you can just skip it. So if you're just scrolling through your inputs and you're only using three inputs, you don't have to go through every single one. Um, then you've got your your digital input there, so you want to assign optical three to video one, then you can do that. And um, when then whether you're using HDMI, um, just to say as well, if you want to be assigning HDMI to uh, any of the video inputs, you have to turn the Cure Link off. If the Cure Link is still on, it won't let you assign HDMI to that uh, to any of the inputs. So that's quite an important point. Um, obviously, you can turn the component on or off as well, and then the 12 volt triggers, um, the scaling menu which you might expect to see in here uh, is actually something that appears on the front of the screen uh, on the front disp display of the unit and it's not something you can do unless you've got a signal running through that unit in the first place so if you just get the amp out of the box and want to set it up for all of your inputs before you've plugged everything in um, you won't be able to say I want this input to output this you have to have a signal running through it before you can set the scaling up. Uh, obviously you can change the OSD language as well if you want it to be in English or Russian, then it's entirely up to you, but we're going to leave it on English. You can see we had the Cure Link off there just so we could show you the, the HDMI assigning. Um, if you've got the Cure Link on, then you can't assign the HDMIs. Uh, you've got the multi-channel input setting there, so you can up the gain to the, uh, for the subwoofer, and then which video input you want to apply to that. Uh, you've got your zone two and three volume levels, so if you want it fixed or variable obviously with a fixed one you have to be careful of very loud volumes uh, your power on level so if you just want it at the last input so if you were listening at minus 10 dB last like earlier in the day and then you turn it on at night and you want it to be a bit quiet and that you can say well I want it to be set at minus 60 dB when I turn the unit on and then you can limit the volume and so I'll just save any visitors or younger people who might want to try and overdrive the amplifier slightly obviously you don't want that to happen so you can set an upper limit of minus 10 dB which should be most, uh, enough for most people um, the remote control mode, if you're using more than one SSLX82, so you, the remotes don't conflict with each other. And then the flicker reduction on the screen, you can see it just changes the GUI characters there.